Scrimshaw is carving or engraving into the ivory and filling up the grooves that are engraved in with paint, ink, oil. On the sailing ships, the whalers used the dirt on their hands to fill up those. But basically, it's filling up the grooves. And, and in so doing, an image appears on the surface of the ivory. It's such an exacting, tiny, miniature art form that the slightest change in the way that these things are used can either make the scrimshaw look Let's see, rough or clean. I wear thick magnification glasses that were prescribed by an optometrist. So it's a very intense experience to make scrimshaw. In our boat experiences, I'm constantly excited by all the different kinds of animals. And, and it, it's funny because it does take me into wildlife, scrimshaw. I have always loved realism. I find it to be a challenge to say something meaningful or even powerful on a tiny surface, on a very tiny object. And I feel that since I was a painter before I started Scrimshaw, I naturally, my Scrimshaw looks like little paintings. It forces me to design in my purest form. There can be no confusion in it or it's lost. It's a reproduction kind of thing that I'm doing, even though each knife is hand carved. All exactly the same, to the minutest detail. Micarta is is a material that is man-made. It's paper that has been pressed or impregnated with a resin and it, the combination of those two materials uh, produces a substance very much like ivory, only its consistency for scrimshaw is perfect. We work on the fossilized ivories, and even those we consider to be a very precious material and to not be squandered. Mm -hmm. But to create something on a fresh ivory, such as fresh walrus, fresh elephant ivory, whale's teeth, any of those are absolutely taboo in my studio. There's a kind of a power or a passion that goes on living so near the end of the continent or right next to such a powerful force as the ocean as a place to... Um, become inspired or just to find solitude, it's very rich and, and very enduring.